everybody, it's Army Guy E8. Welcome back to World of Tanks console. Today, we have a special collaborative interactive tank review between Just a Cone and myself. Just a Cone is a fellow streamer, and he's here to provide the gameplay at the end of this battle. So you're gonna wanna make sure and stick around and check it out because he has two great battles. One in the single fire gun and one in the auto loader. And the links to his profiles can be found in the description below. So make sure and click on them and go over and give them a follow. And we're also here to take a look at the new premium Czechoslovakian tier seven heavy tank, the Škoda Tango 45 Lioness. This tank is currently available in this season's past. And we took this tank into battle 208 times. We had a 57% win rate. We won marked it and we earned an ace tanker. So here's the bluff, the bottom line up front. This is an okay tank, I liked it, but it is very average. It has average speed, average armor, but it does have two guns that you can choose between. It can hold its own against same and lower tier tanks, but when we fought against tier eights and nines, we definitely struggled. You may have to play this tank smart if you're lower tier. Do not rush in. Be the support tank and be ready to take the shots when the time is right. Let's take a look at the details. The tank's origins. A tier seven Czechoslovakian heavy tank. Its guns feature high penetration and a good rate of fire, allowing it to effectively hit same tier enemy vehicles. Thanks to its sloped frontal armor and sufficient HP, the Škoda Tango 45 perfectly performs the role as the team's main battle tank during positional battles. This premium vehicle has a 20% XP bonus and a 35% silver bonus. Let's go take a look at it by the numbers. This tank comes with two gun packages you can choose between. A standard single fire gun with a consistent rate of fire and a three shot auto loader with burst damage. Here you're going to see the detail base difference with no modifiers between the two guns you can choose. On the left, you have the standard single fire gun. On the right, the three shot auto loader. Let's look at the numbers. Speed, you're gonna go 35 kilometers an hour in this tank. Oops, fat fingers, my bad. The, fire is the gun's an 88 millimeter Skoda, Victor Zulu 36. The single fire gun's the November variant, the auto loader is the Mike Alpha variant. Rate of fire is better on the single fire gun at 8.11 rounds a minute. The auto loader, 7.32 rounds per minute. Reload time for the single fire gun is 7.4 seconds. For the auto loader, it's 19.6 seconds. Plus, you have a 2.5 second inner clip reload between each round, which is actually pretty nice. Aim time is better on the single fire gun at 2.5 seconds. It's a 2.7 seconds on the auto loader. Ammo, ammunition. The Alpha ammo is AP and it'll pin about 194 millimeters of enemy armor. The premium Bravo ammo is heat and it'll pin about 250 millimeters of enemy armor. You're gonna hit the enemy for about 220 hit points on average if you pin them. And there's something else I think you need to take into consideration when you pick the ammo in this tank. Shell velocity. The Alpha AP ammo has a velocity of 995 meters per second. The Bravo Premium Heat ammo has a velocity of only 600 meters per second. That's around 40% slower than the Alpha ammo. With the Bravo ammo, you're gonna have to decide if the lack of velocity and reliability is worth the trade off for more pen. The accuracy on the single fire gun is better at a .38. It's a .40 on the auto loader. Gun depression on both guns is negative seven degrees. Gun elevation, 15 degrees. Damage per minute. The DPM that we get out of these guns the way we have them set up. The single fire gun, we get 2,152 hit points out of the enemy. The auto loader, not so much, 1,863. Let's go take a look at the armor. The armor on this tank is pretty straightforward. The frontal turret armor thickness is between 45 and 160 millimeters. 
The frontal hall armor thickness is 110 millimeters upper and lower plates. Let's go take a look at the commander. Wake up! Woo! We got a sleepy bear driving our tank today, and it's Boy Tech, and he has eight skills. Those skills are Sixth Sense, Situational Awareness, Camo Expert, Born Leader, Rapid Loading, Steady Aim, Run and Gun, and Snapshot. The equipment that he put on his tank is optics, advanced gun lane drive, vents, and of course enhanced targeting information. Some people also like to run advanced powertrain and traction so what are you doing? Get that off of there. You're going to make the bear grumpy. And what are you doing? Don't hand that to him. It's too heavy, and he's already holding the camera. Like I said, some people like to run advanced powertrain and traction system to get a little boost in speed. We're going to run rations to get a little boost in our speed as well. We're running beef taco. I hope it's not too spicy. Say goodbye, boy tech. Who's a good bear? versatility of the Lioness Skoda. Tango 45 allows you to fill the role of main battle tank with ease. Its high penetration and unrelenting rate of fire makes this tank a formidable foe against vehicles of the same tier. Its sloped frontal armor gives it the defenses needed to get into the ideal position. If you enjoy side scraping, then you'll enjoy playing the Lioness Skoda Tango 45. All right, that's it. Those are the numbers. Make sure and stick around. Watch the battles that Just the Cone's gonna be in here in a second. Two ace tankers, one in the single fire gun and one in the auto loader. Woo! -wee! Them some good battles. Hello there. I'm Just a Cone, and I'm honored that Army Guy has allowed me to provide the gameplay for this video today. In this first game, we're using the single shot. We're top tier on Malinov. Knowing that this thing goes 35 kilometers an hour means I'm not going to risk going up the hill and having a bad fight. So what I'm going to do here since I'm top here is I'm going to risk being in the middle of the map so that it's a very rotatable position. Now I'm going to preface this by saying I have a camo net on this vehicle. I have, I believe it was optics, camo net, and vents. First off, we're going to get into some action right here. 6.0 is going to allow us to hit some shots on this wheelie. There's the first one. Had to put a lot of lead into it. You have 220 alpha and you start with AP. You have heat as premium. There's the second one. 6.0 allowed us to do that. Gotta, gotta bless it. Sadly, we missed the third, but we're in this rotatable position. I see none of our team is going up on the hill. And they have some heavies out in the, in the ice here. So we're going to take advantage of that. We're going to dump someone to this T6100 who is not spotting me. I have now spotted their T1 heavy who is also not spotting me. I'm not even using any bush cover. I'm just... I got a camo net. That's all it is. We're going to farm this guy. We're going to take him out of the game. There's our first kill. We're already at 1250 damage. Instead of going up the hill and spending our time, we rush to this middle position so we can highly rotate around the map when need be. But we're going to sit here for a while. Because it's going to work for us. This hammer wants to continue to drive in the ice. I notice him, but I want to take a shot over here. Risk that shot. Wasted it. But it's okay, I got a good reload. Only 220 alpha, so it's not a long reload. I hit this nasty shot on this guy. I'm not going to hit any more on him. Instead, I'm going to focus on this hammer. Now, I totally believe this guy was going to spot me. He does not, though. Now I'm using the bushes. He's driving through bushes himself. I have the camo net. It's working for me. These guys, I don't believe, have optics on. Otherwise, I would be spotted. They're German heavies. But that's two of them down. Look up here. Not, again, none of our team went up to the hill. We have three sniping heavies in the G9 position. I don't know what they're doing, but it's letting us get a good game. I'm very aware of the people on the hill, keeping them in my back mind. I'm waiting for this light tank, though, to be a little bit more aggressive. I don't know what else is back there by the church. Whatever is back there could mess me up. So I'm going to sit here and wait for a little bit. Maybe let them come down the hill, maybe farm them a bit. I saw this Churchill was coming over here, so maybe get him. But I'm going to sit here for a bit. I don't want to get spotted. I don't want to get artied. Churchill's giving me his side. I have enough view range myself. I believe I'm spotting this guy. 
I am. I'm getting spotting for it. I'm going to farm the rest of him. I got a good reload. He's getting spotted. There he goes. That's another one. Now, this Thunderbolt on the hill looks like he's going to go. I lead it just enough to get around into him. He's going to hide behind these rocks, though. I still see they have a tank destroyer who has not been spotted. But I don't want to mess with him. That was a terrible RBRT. There's the Hellcat. Who's going to sit and give us a shot. Put a nice lead into him. I hit his ammo rack, but he repaired it. Take a blind fire. It does not connect. He did not sit there. I'm praying, and I'm praying this Thunderbolt drives backwards. Come on now. Yes. There he did. Now, the reason I didn't shoot there is because that back end was yellow because it's spaced armor. That wasn't real armor. He's gone. I know their Hellcat is up there. I know there's a full health Leo. Now, that guy could be a problem. I couldn't tell what kind of gun he had on him, but... Now, I'm going to go and move into this forward position knowing we're up by three our light tank has moved further back to provide view range on the hill so instead i'm gonna make a push in here knowing that my light tank ain't gonna do it himself i'm gonna do it i could probably go for Artie if i wanted to but what i want to do is get shots onto the people on the hill and maybe see if there's anyone else still still sitting over here they have three of their heavies pushing in the h1 position and both their light tanks are down there so i know i'm free here I know all that's left is a Leo and a Hellcat up here, after looking in the bottom left. Trying to get shots on that Leo, he's not giving me a, a, a position on him yet. So I'm going to go for Artie. I'm going to get Artie out of the game. It's 10 to 8. They're kind of bringing it back. But I get, I get a shot into the Hellcat. He came down from the hill just to die to me. Perfect. Great. I'm still spotted. I know Artie's got plenty of bush cover here. I, have, I don't remember what tiers they are, but they turn out to be a tier 6 and a tier 5. Now, I don't have any HE. I know I have a good reload. I can do that. This guy could have used an HE round. Because I, I low roll for 181. He gets the shot into me, but it's no big deal. It's no big deal. And now it's 9 to 4. 9 to 3, I should say. So I'm trying my best here. I want to get that 4K. It'd be a great game if I got 4K. It was a nice play. Top tier, rotatable position, because I know I'm slow. But now I have to chase damage. It's 9 to 2. I quickly looked at whatever my kills were at, and I believe I wanted a top gun here. 39, 46 damage, 668 assisted. Can I get a shot into him? Another bad snapshot. Well, not really a snapshot, but another bad shot. And I don't get it. But this light tank, too much HP. Even if I hit this, which I do, I get over the 4K mark. I'm not going to get the kill. So I'm thinking to myself, is this enough? Is this enough? And of course it is, because we're watching it. So there we go. First game in the single shot. Get it to a highly rotatable position, because you know you're slow. 1991 base XP, 5 kills, 4177 damage. Just enough to pull us over the ace value. Now, this tank has a second gun on it, so we're going to go ahead and play with that one in this next game. And we're going to try and go for an ace with the autoloader. Now, I, I'll preface this straight up front. I prefer the single shot to the autoloader, hands down, easily. But we're going to give it a go anyway. And here we are on Dukla Pass, top tier again. And this time, knowing my speeds isn't enough to give me a power play position idea here. This is Dukla Pass. I either go one flank or go the other. There's no going into the middle for a rotatable position. Instead, I'm going to go to the bottom right of the map, and I'm going to brawl it out. So I'm probably going to fast forward through this because it's a lot of driving on this map. This tank is not the quickest, but it is quicker than the tier 7 tech tree tank, which only goes 30. They added this gun to this tank because uh, it wasn't on this tank previously. Obviously, we know tanks... Uh, most of our tanks come over from PC, and PC only had this tank as a single-shot vehicle. Console has added a three-round autoloader to it, which is odd because the rest of the line is all two shots. So I wonder how much better this autoloader could have been if it was a two-shot autoloader. I'm going to reload here because it's not that long of a reload, but you also only hit for 220, so it's kind of a long reload. But I want to make sure I have full burst potential here. Oh 
Gonna look for a shot in this 5-4, and I'm not gonna get it as I look too far forward. This Dreadnought, I really want to get out of the game. Now, I know I can clip out this T1 Heavy. He's perfectly... Like, if I hit above my Alpha, or for my Alpha, for all three of these shots, he's dead. I'll take a few hits from him knowing that I'm going to get rid of him. So there's one. This Dreadnought, I'm going to use this rock as cover. I took two shots from him. But I'm playing aggressively here, obviously. I, I'm top tier, and I want to get some damage in. This light tank's going to get a round into me. I'm at 1,000 hit points. And we're 9 to 14 already. We're down by so much. Can I be accurate enough to pen this Coppola of this AT2? I sure can. And already takes... What was that? 500 damage off of us? 500 HP? It's not looking good. We're already down 7 to 12. And it's only been 3 minutes in the battle. And I already have 1,000 of my hit points basically gone. I'm gonna get one round into this guy. I kind of want to bait him into thinking I have the single shot. So that I can put another clip into him. Because he was at 900 hit points. So I wanted to put that extra shell into him. And now I can clip him out. I believe he just fired. I bounced that round though, unfortunately. So I start aiming these. Luckily my teammates are now shooting at him. And I high roll this one for 242. So I take him out of the game. I'm at 2020 damage. But we're still losing 6 to 10. Knowing my speeds, I can either go for the cap. And, and go for Artie. Or risk being capped out. So instead I'm turning around. I see they have two of their light tanks. There's still two heavies and three mediums left alive. That have not been spotted. So I know they're going for the cap. And sure enough. There's one on the cap. So I'm going to take my time. I'm going to drive this way. I have two minutes as long as one is on the cap. And I have a light tank in front of me. While the super hellcat that's behind him just took out the chaffee. So he's uncontested. He's also a wheelie. So he's going to get there quite fast. He's uncontested. He's going to go... Stop the cap, hopefully. And I'm probably going to decide to make a play up on this ridge rather than going all the way back to the cap. Now, this P-43 bis. Oh, this would have been such a nice shot. But, as you can see here, I'm not going to make it. Yeah. Would have been nice. He gets behind the building cover. Our light tank is circling them and got got the Cromwell off the cap and then killed him. Now, this there's a bis out here. I'm not sure if I'm going to be quick enough to get to him, but I start to notice that we have two tank destroyers fighting my one heavy tank back here. So I hit the reload button, and I turn around. He's a Tiger Preen. He's got a nice amount of hit points, and he just took out what I believe is a tier 5. But now a medium has showed up. I've reloaded. He's taking a beating, but as long as I can help him out, this T-3485 has decided to run forward. I put two into him. Now this E25, I'm hoping this Tiger P hits enough into him that this E25, there we go, I got him. E25, easily gone, but we're still only at 2598 damage, and now we've brought this back, 5 to 3, but there's a full health T29. I was looking at this guy like a pile of treasure, man. This was my chance. Now he's not full health, though. Still not full health? Already just took out our Super Hellcat somehow. I bounce up his upper plate because I, I'm using standard rounds still. And he's actually got a quite strong upper plate. So I hit his weak point twice. Now, he's backing up instead of pushing his advantage, uh, which is now not an advantage because he's now down below my HP. But he's backing up. And I last thing I want to do is fight a hole down T29. So I think to myself, he's got already cover. There's another heavy tank somewhere. I'm going to go around because my tanks are probably not going to push me. Light tank's looking for Artie, which is not in the corner from the angle in which he shot me at the beginning of the map. But he's going there regardless. I'm going to come around here and hopefully have shots into this T-29. At this point, I didn't know whether I would have shots, but I more so wanted to come over here to try and get shots and also see where the other heavy tank is. Maybe the other heavy tank is going for a cap, but no, he's flanking our teammates. Now I feel bad, because if he takes them both out, we can uh, we can lose this. I bounce off the side of his turret, hit the second one, and track him, luckily, so he doesn't go backwards behind this rock where I couldn't shoot him. And Artie has taken out another one of my teammates. So now it's a one-on-one -on -one with the heavy tank down there, and I see that the Karo is fighting my Tiger P with more hit points. Light tank's coming in for backup, though, and I'll be there soon. Karo's got 1,000 hit points to my Tiger P's 200. 
going to take me a while to get there, though. Luckily, while I'm slowly driving this way, I can put another reload in. So I'm fully loaded. But the Tiger P has somehow, with the help of the light tank, gotten this guy to 470. So he's definitely clippable. I missed my first shot. I'm trying to risk these because I don't want my Tiger P to die. Bounce that second shot. I have loaded heat now, knowing it's a car room. Now this is bad. I could low roll this shot and then have to go on a full reload. So I decide, screw the heat. I don't want to shoot into his sides and on his tracks and, and have him absorb them all. I'm instead going to reload and hope that he's noticed the light tank and is going for him. And it looks like he is. By the time I get up this steep hill, which is not very steep, but for this tank it is. I'm be reloaded. I have a tank in front of me too. Hit the gun of the dead tank, but I'm able to put the round in. And luckily, I did not low roll. So I save a little bit of silver, I guess you can say. Now I'm going to hit another reload, and we're going to go for Artie. And like I said earlier, I know Artie's not in the bottom left. So I'm going to start heading back again towards my cap circle. And now I'm hoping for a Radley's. Because I'm at 7 kills now. So this time I did get the top gun. We're going to speed this up a little bit though. Because 35 kilometers an hour is pretty darn slow for this tank. And it's kind of a drag for the rest of this map. The light tank scours all over the map. Just for me to be the one to find him. As you'll see here in a little bit. Unfortunately, I get one shot off, but he hides away, and I'm trying my best to get an angle on him. I'm keeping it driving forward, going and I'm going, and the light tank takes the kill for me. So I don't get my rallies, but this time I did get the top gun, and it is an ace. 1922 base XP. Less, uh, less damage, but more kills. So I did get that ace in this one as well. And again, army guy, thank you for allowing me to provide the gameplay. I just want to show you guys a little bit of proof that this tank can fight tier 8s. I did get a game where I wasn't recording, but I got this one with 2230 base XP, 4222 damage. The tier 8 game on El Haluf, so it is definitely possible to fight tier 8s in this thing.